Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming to my talk here at the Nearly Carbon Neutral Geometric Topology Conference. Um, I'm Diana Davis. I work at Swarthmore College, and I'm here at the Institut des Hautes Études Scientifiques. And I'm going to tell you about periodic paths on the Pentagon and on other polygons. Um, this is all joint work with Samuel Lelievre, who is here at Université de Paris-Saclay. And um, it's, it's work that we've been, the Pentagon stuff we've been working on for a few years. But the new things on polygons with more than five sides is what we did during the lockdown and confinement during the coronavirus pandemic of 2020. So I'm, I'm excited to tell you what we've been doing. So first of all, uh, what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about billiards, which is a particle bouncing around inside a polygon uh, so that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection, as in real life. And why study billiards on pentagons and other shapes? It's because as humans, we only understand periodic billiards on a few shapes. So the square, the triangle, the hexagon, those are shapes that tile the plane by reflection across their edges. There are also two other special triangles that do that, right triangles. And then thanks to our work, we understand it on the pentagon as well. And then I'll show you some pictures on other polygons with more sides, seven, nine, and so on. So here's the, the key tool that we use is that if we have a, a billiard bouncing around in a square like this, um, we unfold it across its edges to turn a billiard into a translation surface. So the translation surface we get is this torus where the billiard trajectory just goes straight. And um, it's, we have a lot of uh, machinery to work with translation surfaces, so this works out better. Also, the trajectory goes in only one direction instead of the original four. Um, similarly, on the pentagon, so this is a pentagon billiard table, so we'd have our pentagon bouncing around inside there. And what we do is we unfold that. So um, we unfold a few times, I've unfolded four times, and what you see that I've gotten here is I've gotten two, two sides that are oppositely oriented and parallel with the same color. So these both unfolded from the purple edge. And so I will identify those and then, um, then uh, get a surface. And if we keep going all the way, then we can get every side to have an oppositely oriented buddy, all the ones around the outside and the ones in the middle. And that gives us um, a big surface with uh, genus six and five vertices. So we call that the necklace because it looks quite like a necklace. And that is the surface that we can use to understand periodic billiards on the Pentagon. But it's a bit big, so what we do actually is we project down to the double Pentagon. Um, so we unfolded the uh, billiard table to the big surface, the necklace, which is its translation cover, and then we projected that down. The necklace is a five-fold cover of this double Pentagon, which is smaller. It has just genus two and one vertex. And we can do almost everything we want on the double Pentagon, so that's what we use. Okay, so here's our coding scheme for periodic directions on the square. So this is going back to the square where periodic directions are those with rational slope. So what we do here is we have the first quadrant and we have these two shears, um, the blue one, which takes the first quadrant to just the blue sector and the red one, which takes the, red, the whole first quadrant to just the red sector. Those are vertical and horizontal shears with determinant one. And, and so here's what we do. Um, we start with just one point, uh, one zero, all the way over here, and we apply these shears repeatedly. So originally, we just get one new point, one, one, and then we get uh, two new points, and so on. And, and if we keep doing this forever and ever, we will get all of the periodic directions on the square. So all of the directions with rational slope or um, uh, integer vectors that are relatively prime. And the other thing this gives us is a coding scheme. It gives us a unique code for each periodic direction. So for example, this point right here, seven comma five, has code one zero one one zero, because um, starting at one zero, we applied first matrix one, and then matrix zero, and then matrix one, and then matrix one, and then matrix zero, uh, to get where we got to, to get to this point. So it's like a unique address, and we'll, and we'll be using that. Um, so the structure that we get is, is a classical structure called the fairy tree. So um, it puts a, a tree structure, a binary tree, on the set of periodic directions on the square or just uh, fractions in lowest terms. And so again, any, any fraction that you want, you can see how you get it. You start at 1, 0. You apply these transformations 1, 0, 1, 1, 0 to get where you want to be. Okay. 
Now, how about for the Pentagon? So we're using this double Pentagon translation surface. So this is the double Pentagon translation surface. And the idea is that if you pass across any edge, you come out on the oppositely oriented edge of the same color. Um, it has a friend, which is the golden L. It's the same kind of thing. It's a translation surface where the um, oppositely oriented sides of the same color are identified. And it's two golden rectangles that overlap. So the, the long side is phi, the golden ratio, one plus the square root of five all over two, and the other side is one. Um, so these two surfaces are the same surface up to a linear map. So if you take the picture on the left here and you sort of shear it upwards, whoosh, you get the picture on the right. Or if you take the picture on the right and you shear it to the side, you get the picture on the left. Um, and, and the edges are identified, so you can simply move, uh, uh, you can simply move the, uh, the triangle over here, over to there, and this triangle on the bottom, move it up to there. And then we get the same surface, and we use the golden L because it's rectangular, which makes it easier. So here's a coding scheme for periodic directions on, on the pentagon. We put our golden L in the corner here instead of the, the square that we had originally. And that golden L uh, separates the first quadrant into four sectors, which I've color coded with four different colors. And then we have these four shears that take the first quadrant to each of those sectors and we cho choose them to have determinant one. Okay, so what do we do? Again, we start with just the point uh, one zero here and we apply the uh, the four transformations. So at the first level, uh, with the four transformations, we get three new points. And then from each of those new points, um, we apply the four transformations and we get four new points. And if we keep doing this for a long time, we get all of the periodic directions on the golden L. And we also get a tree structure here. So last time we had a binary tree. Now we have a quaternary tree. So if we start with our simplest direction one zero and plot apply the, the four transformations, we get well three new vectors, and then from each of those we apply the four transformations and so on. And vectors are fun to look at, but not really. So here are the directions and trajectory pictures. The simplest trajectory up here, just a trajectory parallel to an edge, and then the next simplest and the next simplest. So this gives us a kind of um, tree of complicated complication of trajectories. Okay, so what I want to tell you is first of all, so basically what do billiards look like? First of all, what do they look like on the square? And then what do they look like on other shapes? And I'm going to focus my uh, talk on telling you about some things that don't happen on the square, which I call symmetry, buddies, and families. Okay, so what do billiards look like on the square? Well, they basically look like this. So this is a trajectory with slope three over five. You can tell because it hits the top three times and it hits the side five times. Here's a trajectory with slope seven over five. Hits the top seven times and the right five times. How about this one? This one's a bit more complicated. And this one. And this one, this one. For this one, I shifted the trajectory over a little bit so it doesn't have the, quite as much symmetry as the others. You can see that's what happens if you move your trajectory over a little bit from uh, some sort of uh, core curve. So the takeaway message here is that Basically, billiards on the, on the square are very similar looking. They always look like a chain link fence, basically. A bunch of uh, parallelograms, rhombuses, and triangles. That's pretty much it. That's all you get. That's it. OK, so I want to tell you about symmetry. So on the Pentagon, there are two types of trajectories. There's ones with only reflection symmetry, and there's ones with reflection and rotation symmetry. So this here is a trajectory of period four on the double pentagon and how I'm, I'm going to turn it into a billiard trajectory by folding it up. So I go fold, fold, fold. And now it's actually a complete billiard trajectory. So it looks like it only has two pieces, but it's actually a trajectory of period four, it just bounces like this. Okay, so this is how you get reflection symmetry by having a trajectory on the double, penta on the, on the double pentagon that when you fold it up, it's, it's, a, it's a complete trajectory. On the other hand, you can have a trajectory like this that when you fold it up, it's not done. And so you have to have five copies of it to get a billiard path. And that's how you get something with reflection symmetry. So uh, we've, we've, written, we've written our program so that we can see periodic billiard trajectories on um, tables with lot, as many edges as you want, as long as it's an odd number. And so here's, I just wanted to show you some examples. So this is the 15 gun. So, so we saw that V-shaped trajectory just a minute ago that bounced out and back. 
Um, and the reason it did that was because it, it hit the edge perpendicularly. So this one does the same thing. You can see it hits that edge perpendicularly, and then it hits this edge perpendicularly, and so it just goes back. So that's a trajectory of period eight. And here are some other nice looking ones that you can see. Here's some more examples. This one, you can see it hits it almost perpendicularly, but not quite. So this is all on the 15 gun. So they can get pretty interesting. Lots of, lots of parallel bits here. And then these. So aren't they beautiful and interesting? And these are things that people never saw before, before we tried to look at them. And buddies. OK, it's good to have a buddy, uh, especially if you are in quarantine or in confinement. So here's what a buddy, here's what I mean by buddies. So you've decided to hit your ball in this direction, but you haven't exactly decided where you want to stand. So do you want to stand here or maybe do you want to stand here? So these are the, um, the parallel directions, parallel trajectories in a given direction. So I'll show you a short video that I made of uh, some examples of this. So the way that these different trajectories in a given direction happen is they're the short and long trajectories in a given cylinder. So we start with this direction, and if we shift it over, everything will be the same until we hit a vertex, and then we switch to being in the, being in the long cylinder, which is down here, and so on. Okay, so that's what we get. Um, so you can see, for example, you get this short trajectory, this pentagon, and this longer trajectory, this star. And the blue one is uh, the golden ratio times as long in the case of the Pentagon. So here's these two examples. These are horizontal buddies. So we basically take this horizontal trajectory. Everything's the same, everything's the same until we hit that vertex there and the, and the other one on the other side. And then we get into the other cylinder. So that's what happens on the Pentagon. How about the 15 gun? So here we take this horizontal trajectory here and then we, we push it down and we push it down to get this one, and then we keep pushing it down and get this one, and so on, to, to get all of these pictures. And so an interesting thing you can see is that these have all different symmetries. So symmetries of orders 15, 5, and 3 in this case. Kind of nice. So you might think, OK, 15, that was 3 times 5. What happens if you have factors that are, are all the same? How about the 27 gone? So here we have uh, parallel buddies in this other non-horizontal direction, and we get all these beautiful paths. So these have symmetries of order, in this case, one, nine, and three. Kind of cool. So for example, I like this one. It looks kind of like a triangle. Um, and this one, it looks sort of like a hexagon, but it turns out that the hexagon isn't symmetric. It's only symmetric of order three. So pretty nice. Um, and one, the takeaway messages you can have here are that in a given direction, there are many different paths, so lots of different buddies, one for each cylinder, and that the order of the symmetry divides the number of sides. So uh, 1, 3, and 9 all divide 27, and uh, 3, 5, and 15 all divide 15. Pretty nice. Okay, and then finally, families. So I like, uh, I like this topic a lot. Um, I'm even wearing a shirt with families on it, on the front and the back. So what is this all about? Great question. Okay, so, um, so here is the coding. So this is, this is trajectory number one in the Pentagon family. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, this direction and I'm going to repeatedly uh, apply a horizontal shear. So I'm going to look at location one, one zero, one zero zero, one zero 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 zero, and see what trajectories we get. So here is uh, one zero zero. Here's one zero zero zero. So I'm repeatedly applying a twist 
to the surface and seeing what trajectories you get. And we'll just fast forward a little bit and look at that. We get this beautiful star is born. So that's what happens. Uh, these, and I call these families because they look similar, but they're different. There's more complicated ones as you go out this branch of the tree. Um, and then the family that's on my shirt is this one. People seem to like this one a lot. So I like there, people seem to be just drawn to the members of this family. So here's an example. So here, this is, um, so this is one, two. And instead of putting zeros on the end, I'm gonna put zeros in the middle. So the next one is one, zero, two, and then one, zero, zero, two, and then so on and so on. We can fast forward a little bit and see what we get. So I think this is really interesting because um, these obviously are not equidistributed. There's a theorem in billiards that says that in regular polygons or um, any polygon that unfolds to a beach surface, um, every path is either periodic or equidistributed. And so these periodic paths, they look, they're, they can be as dense as you want, but they are obviously not equidistributed. So that was um, a phenomenon that we discovered that no one else had expected. So it's quite sort of interesting and beautiful. And you might wonder what happens for other polygons. So for example, the 51 gone. So this one, the paths are going to have either um, symmetry of order one, meaning only reflection, reflection symmetry, or order 51, which is what, like, for example, the one in the picture. So here's a, a family here. As we go on, it gets more interesting and more and more dense. Okay, so you can see that here we have this um, nothing in the middle, this very dense band, and then this lighter band around the outside. So that's sort of interesting. Okay, how about another number? How about nine? So here's a family on the nine gun. That was unexpected. Okay, this is a family with two and then zero, 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 different numbers of zeros. Oops. Unexpected. So the idea here is that um, we have these nice, these ones, which just seem to be getting more dense and more complicated in each family. And then every third one, we have one that looks like this, and those are also getting more complicated. Um, we have seen this uh, in, the, in the Pentagon, and in the Pentagon, it was, there were families where every fifth one was different. And here we have, in the case of the nine gone, this family where every third one is different. So we conjecture that in an n gone family where every kth number is different, k has to divide n. Seems, seems reasonable, but we don't know. So we're gonna work on that. And then I just wanted to show you just so, a little taste of the vast world of these things that exist. So um, in this case, my niece was turning 15 and I wanted to make a trajectory picture for her. So I started exploring the 15 gun. So my constraints were, it had to be a 15 gun and the coding number, so that location in the tree, had to be her birthday. So I, I, had, I had one degree of freedom there because I could do month, day, or day, month, but I only had those two numbers to work with. And then um, I had all the parallel buddies to work with. So just the vast space, right? You, you could look at a polygon with any number of sides and you could put any numbers as the coding, basically, uh, any numbers up to the number of transformations that you have. Um, so there's just, just so many, so many beautiful things that we could look at. So I wanted to show you five examples, the five ones that I thought were nicest. Um, so this is, this is a periodic billiard trajectory on the 15 gun, where the coding is my niece's birthday. Here's another one. This one has five-fold rotational symmetry. Isn't that beautiful? It has this little, little, uh, little star. And then this one, look at this. It has these five, uh, these uh, different bands of dense and less dense and dense and less dense. It kind of looks like an eye, like an iris. It's beautiful. This one, so cool. It's, it looks, it, to me, it looks like when you slice open an apple and you look on the inside, you get this little star, but kind of symmetry around it as well. Isn't that beautiful? And then this one, which I think is the most beautiful. So this is to just, show an, uh, 
give a little taste that the world of these things is vast and that much of it is beautiful, but you have to know where to look. And, and that's always the key to these things. So thank you so much and uh, be safe and healthy wherever you are.